Hello students, by now you must have got used to the new normal of online classes. But if due to some signal network issues or any other technical glitches, if you have missed a few classes, then this video lecture will definitely help you. Also, these lectures will come in handy when you are studying and revising by yourself. So, let's get started today with the chapter on reproduction in animals. Reproduction in lower and higher animals. The diagrams which I am using in this presentation are all the textual diagrams from the Maharashtra State Board textbook of SYGC. Let us begin by understanding what is reproduction. Reproduction is a biological process in which new life forms arise from the pre-existing life forms. Reproduction is a very important characteristic of living organisms. Reproduction can be classified broadly into two types, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the one which involves the formation and fusion of gametes and asexual reproduction does not involve the fusion or formation of gametes. Here in this chapter we are going to discuss two types of asexual reproduction. One is the gemule formation and another is the process of budding. Let us begin by understanding what is asexual reproduction. Now, as the name itself suggests, asexual means there will be no two sexes involved. It does not involve both the sexes. The formation of the offspring or the progeny is by a single parent only. This kind of reproduction is commonly seen in lower animals. What do we mean by lower animals? Generally, the non-chordates and the lower classes, the lower groups of chordates. These are called as lower animals. Now, as this is asexual reproduction, the, there is no gamete formation involved here. There are no male and female gametes. There will be no fusion of gametes. And as there is no gamete formation involved, the process of meiosis also does not take place here. Why is the process of meiosis required? Basically, for the gamete formation. But no gamete formation, so no meiosis. So how does the reproduction take place? The cells from the parent body simply divide by the process of mitosis and the daughter cells are formed. Hence, the daughter cells which are formed are identical to the parent cells. So we also call the daughter cells as clones. Now let us discuss the two types of asexual reproduction. First one, first one is the process of gemule formation. Gemule formation is observed in sponges. Let us see what a gemule looks like. This is a gemule. A gemule is nothing but a bud which is produced internally by the sponges. Now in the gemule, here in the center, you can see a mass of cells. These cells are called as the archaeocytes. These archaeocytes give rise to the new sponges. Each archaeocyte is capable of giving rise to a new offspring, a new sponge. But when is this gemule formed? When the conditions, the environmental conditions are unsuitable, unfavorable for reproduction. When there are favorable conditions of water and temperature, these archaeocytes will be released and each archaeocyte will develop into a new sponge. 
Let us now discuss the another type of asexual reproduction that is the process of budding. The process of budding is very commonly observed in cylindrates like hydra, corals and apart from cylindrates it is also observed in animals like acidians. Let us see the most common example of budding that is the budding in the animal called hydra. What happens here is, see this is the parent hydra, a small outgrowth develops on the parent hydra. This outgrowth is called as a bud. The bud grows in size, starts developing all the different organs, parts. See this is a fully mature bud which is formed here. And once the bud is fully matured, it breaks off from the parent body and the young hydra has separated here. This is the process of budding. Let us understand the process of regeneration. Please note that regeneration is not a kind of reproduction. Regeneration is an altogether different process in which an organism can repair, restore or regrow its damaged or lost parts. This process is seen in many animals like hydra, planaria. Here, the body of the planaria is exerting a pull in the center and it gets split into two parts and each of the part generates the remaining half. It regenerates the remaining half of the body so as to form two different planaria. Now let's come to the topic of sexual reproduction. As the name suggests, sexual reproduction involves both the sexes. It involves the production of gametes. It is the process which involves the production of offsprings by formation and fusion of gametes. This process also has another name called amphimixis. Amphi meaning both and mixes is mixing up. So the male and female gamete are mixing or fusing. That's why the name amphi mixes. Now as there is gamete formation here, the process of meiosis is going to take place here. This is a difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. Now the animals which show sexual reproduction, they show two phases in their lifetime. One phase is the juvenile phase or when the animal is young as we say in common terms. That is, it is that phase of its life when it is not capable yet of reproduction. And the next phase is when it is reproductively mature. Reproductive maturity phase. That means in this phase the animal can now reproduce. Now let us understand what are breeding patterns in sexually reproducing animals. Breeding pattern means whether an animal can breed only in a particular season or if it can breed throughout the year at any time. Depending on this, we can classify the animals as seasonal breeders and continuous breeders. First, let us talk about the seasonal breeders. Seasonal breeders means these animals can reproduce only in a particular period, in a particular season of the year. What are some examples of seasonal breeders? Goats, sheep, donkeys are all seasonal breeders. And what are continuous breeders? Those which do not have a fixed season for reproduction. Their reproduction can occur throughout the year. Humans are continuous breeders. Apes are also continuous breeders. 
Let us now discuss process of human reproduction. There are certain steps involved in the process of human reproduction. Let us understand them. The first step is the step called as gametogenesis. Gameto means gametes, the male and the female gametes. And genesis means generation or formation. So gametogenesis is the process of formation of male and female gametes. After the gametes are formed, the next step is insemination. Insemination meaning the male gametes will enter into the body of the female. The male gametes are delivered into the female body or female reproductive tract. This is the second step. After this, the male gamete will fuse with the female gamete and the process called fertilization takes place. In case of human beings, the fertilization is internal fertilization. After fertilization, the zygote which is formed starts developing. The zygote develops into an embryo. So this is the process of zygote formation and embryogenesis. The next step is called gestation. This is the time period for which the embryo or the fetus is there in the uterus of the mother. This is the gestation period or in common terms this is called as the pregnancy period. And after gestation, after completion of this gestation period, the next step is parturition. Parturition commonly is called as the delivery of the child. This is the last step that is parturition. As we further study human reproduction, let us clear a few basic concepts. What are the gametes in human beings? There are two types of gametes in human beings. The male gamete which is known as the sperm and the female gamete which is known as the ovum. These gametes or sex cells are produced by organs called as primary sex organs or gonads. Now, what are the primary sex organs in humans? The male gonad is called as testis and the female gonad is called as ovary. Females have a pair of ovaries and males have a pair of testis.